come to you. What's going on? It's your cord. Something is just not right. There's a, there's a cord somewhere. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. All right. Um, I started a work, you know, you know, for the past uh, two, two, three Sundays. When I'm going to, um, this coming Sunday, I'm going to deal with tight. And I have just Sunday and Wednesday. My, uh, my interest and my focus in this year's uh, partnership month is to be able to um, adjust your mind. You know, you know, I'm not doing a teaching on trying to teach you how to multiply money or do investment. That's not my focus, you know. My focus in, in this partnership month is to adjust your mind and kill devils. Last Sunday, devils so moved to our church. And I come and put your hands together. If you don't know, but I said last Sunday, devils died in this. How many of you knew that, you know, devils, devils, kawaii, you know, munta papa devils, you know, uh, you know, is to adjust our mind, you know, to be able to accept you know, and then also know the reason for the wealth. When money is coming to you, you know, um, when money is coming to you, the reason is because so that you can be able to release it, you know, to support the work of God. Um, our needs are met. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're a citizen, you're a diplomat, you're an ambassador. Okay, say it again. Say, neighbor, you are a citizen, you are a diplomat, and then you are an ambassador. All right, so on Sunday, we're able to allow ourselves, you know, you know, I mean, this God is just so awesome, you know, and it, you, you will need a pastor to confuse you. All right, you need, you need preachers to confuse you, you know, about the intentions and the minds of God. And on Sunday, I was able to categorically say that we don't deny, you know, that there are abuse. All right, that the, but the fact that there are abuse doesn't absolve you, you know, from stepping in into um, the mind and the intentions of God to credibly um, uh, get resources and also release it to finance the kingdom of God. All right, we are here on an assignment. Our mission is to make the earth to be covered with the glory of God like the waters covered the sea, all right? When you see me, whether I'm working in footy or in AUN or a police, you know, I'm not there because of the salary. We don't operate based on wages. No, we operate on giving and receiving. That's how we operate in our kingdom. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Wages is the Babylonian kingdom, is a kingdom that, you know, we're trying to change to begin to think like our kingdom. All right, so whenever you see me, I'm there to bring the light, you know, you know, of God. For, you listen to me, for God so loved the world. All right, the world is not the earth. All right, the earth and they that dwell in belongs to God. The world is a system. Cosmos is a system. All right, is a political system, is a financial system, the education system. You know, the, 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 the political system, all of the system, all right? But all of these systems or the mountains, you know, are supposed to come to the brightness of your rising or two, all right? God loves them. But the system will only be delivered by whosoever. Whosoever is you and I, all right? But the whosoever are polluted by fall. So they were cleansed. All right, you know, so that they can go for the that which was lost, which is the, the kingdoms, all right, the systems, all right. What the system needs is an intrusion of light, all right, because the absence of the light in the system is darkness. So there's darkness in politics. There's darkness in governance. There's darkness in finance. There's darkness in all of the system. All right. But light will not get into the place until the carriers of light enter there. Am I talking here? So when he made you born again, he released light into you. The entrance of his word brings light to you. 
when you have light, all right, you walk into the banking system, light entered there. Am I talking here? And your responsibility is to salvage because you're coming with an IQ and understanding that is completely different and above the system. You know that the worst thing that can happen to you is to have clan titles where you begin to behave and think like the system that you want to change. Am I talking here? All right. That is why every CDA is mandatory on you to come for weekly briefing. All right, and then the time of prayer because he made us kings and priests. All right, in briefing, we hear the mind of God, you know, as we begin to go into the systems so that we can be able to start changing them. You know, however, you have to understand, you know, when God, you know, you know, you know, release us, you know, there are promises that he gave us. And he said that for the promises that he gave us, you know, um, you know, for it to come to pass, it has to be established using wealth, using wealth. God could have chosen any other thing, you know, to use to validate and establish the relationship that he has with you. All right. So why did God choose wealth? I said it on Sunday. The reason is because God knows that money is powerful. All right, money, you know, is powerful. All right, and on Sunday, we're able to say that money finances ideas, you know, it determines which idea will become popular in the world and which idea, you know, will fizzle out. All right, money, of course, you know, has a long-term endurance in the battle of ideas. All right, money can sustain. All right, ideas, you know, or wisdom can be despised after a long time. You know, in Ecclesiastes last Wednesday, we read that a village or a city was delivered, you know, by a poor wise man. All right. Okay. But his wisdom was despised or right, oh, he was forgotten. The reason is because I will talk little about it. You know, it's because, um, you know, poor people don't have a voice. And I said in this place that, you know, zeal and enthusiasm for a season might try to defeat money. All right. But they will always get tired. You know, it's only money that has the stamina or the endurance when it comes to the battle, you know, of ideas. All right. That is why, you know, it used to be there are some certain ideas that are completely ridiculous, all right? But because they were financed with money and they sustain it, now, you know, they kept bombarding, hitting on the television. Now they move into the Hollywood. They've started making movies on it. And now it is normal for a woman and a woman to be kissing. And for a woman and a woman, you know, you see, you do understand what I'm talking about. Okay, they kept sustaining it with money. Some terrible demonic ideas. Am I talking here? All right. And they're changing, you know, the narrative and the way, you know, it takes, you know, like in America already, it takes preachers with intestinal attitude and fortitude all right and a lot of boldness you know to be able to stand you know and then begin to challenge you know you know some years ago you know of course globally it was a global news you know of the baker all right of same sex they came in that they want to get married this guy he bakes cake and he said that based on his conviction he's not going to bake the cake they took him to court they dragged for years I think the case went right into their Supreme Court. I get what I'm talking about. Because those ideas have been financed by money. By a lot of money. That's why, you know, you know, and then they now started doing what they call, you know, cancel culture. All right. Once you are not, you know, you know, they begin to, you know, and, and begin to cancel you. All right. Recently, America is in trouble because almost all of the sports, the women's sports, you know, are being swept over by transgenders. You know, people that were born males. Okay. They woke up and they said that they are now female. All right. If you challenge it, they will mess you up, destroy you, bring you down. All right. Why? Because money has a stamina and endurance to outpass any idea. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right. And um, so you have to also understand that the kingdom, our kingdom of God is actually a clash of ideas we also have ideas all right because the entrance of the word of god is an idea you know is an idea that is in the mind of god all right okay but those ideas can only be pressed and be pushed in you know using resources and using money all right so my 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 
you know, my, my trust here is to make a, you, your mind become normal, you know, and begin to create ways in which you begin, okay, you know, you know, press in for money. But, all right, to be able to also kill the idea within you that, um, that church are trying to collect your money. All right, okay, okay. Or I'm not supposed to pay my tithe. I'm not supposed to, or, or the church is not supposed to be preaching about money. The church is supposed to be preaching, you know, you know, about um about salvation about salvation how many of you have heard this statement the church is supposed to be preaching about salvation come and wave your hand if you heard church is supposed to be preaching about salvation yeah you know it's you know it's rampant you know and it's you know everywhere so but you see of course you know on sunday we're able to to see how we you know uh to change you know our mindset when it comes to uh the issue you know of wealth resources you know and money now one of the things that we're able to establish you know is that there was a reason why jesus christ was poor you know it has a reason all right and i said it here on sunday that the 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 the, the cost of the law is threefold you know is um um sin sickness you know and poverty all right and so when jesus christ came you know um uh, Valentine, this thing, something is pulling me. Just increase more of the volume so that I, I will not, you know, stress. All right, all right, all right. So I'm going to pick up from there. I want to ask you a question. Should the church preach about salvation? Yes. I said, should the church preach about salvation? I said, should the church preach about salvation? Yes. The church is supposed to preach about salvation. All right. And it's supposed to preach about salvation without guilt. Because Jesus shed his blood for our sin, right? All right, okay. So because the next question I will ask you is that, why is the church supposed to preach about salvation? The reason is because the punishment for sin has been paid. All right, Jesus Christ shed his blood. All right, number two. Does the church, is the church supposed to preach about healing? Should the church preach healing? Come on, talk to me. I said, should the church preach healing? Why? Because Jesus Christ paid the price for the healing. His tribe, isn't it? All right. So if the church is supposed to preach about salvation and the church is supposed to preach about healing, why is the people saying that the church is not supposed to preach about money? I just asked you a question. Have you heard where they said that, that you know, the church is not supposed to preach about money? You heard it. The church is supposed to, church is supposed to preach about salvation. Why should the church preach about salvation? Because the price for sin has been paid. Jesus shed his blood. Why should the church preach about healing? Because the price for sickness has been paid. The stripes himself took away my infirmity and carried my diseases. Okay, so why should the church preach about healing and then, okay, and then not preach about money? Because the same sacrifice that dealt with the sin, dealt with the sickness, and dealt with the poverty. It's the same sacrifice. Come on, put your hands together. It's the same sacrifice. I say it's the same sacrifice. I say it's the same sacrifice. So if that is true, you know, uh, Valentine, you know, it means it is imperative that we preach about prosperity. Because Jesus paid the punishment for us to become rich. I said it, you know, 2 Corinthians 9, it said that for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, but for your sake, he became poor so that you through his poverty will become rich. Am I talking here? Okay. Am I talking in this place? All right. Yes. So okay, because the same impact, effect, what dealt with sin dealt with sickness and dealt with poverty all right am i talking here n n okay how will people be saved salvation has to be preached right how will people be healed healing has to be preached how will people be going to be rich then money and riches have to be preached come on put your hands together i said come on put your hands together i said come on put your hands together all right, okay. If, 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 if for salvation you give, 
Ninety percent, or, or you know, you know, you know, the same time allocated for salvation, the same time should be allocated for the healing, the same time that should be a, the same energy you allocate for for salvation will be the same energy you allocate for healing will be the same energy you allocate for the money. The reason why the church is backward and behind, you know, is this: they brought salvation, so the whole church is sick. You know, because they didn't tell you the whole package. Then Pentecostal came. Of course, you know, of course, they have their own abuse. All right. The whole package is salvation, healing, and riches. That's the package. That's the full package. All right. So if they bring, it's half. When they bring salvation... He said, no, no, you're just supposed to go to heaven. No, God so much care that you get your salvation and for your, your salvation is not for you to go to heaven. You're not saved so that you go to heaven because you didn't fall down from heaven. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. You are saved and cleanse so that the governor can come back inside you and continue the project that he started. Am I talking here? Yes. The reason for the salvation is not the end. It's a means to the end. Oh, somebody, somebody got what I'm talking about. So you can, salvation is not for you. No, it's not the end. So that you, the holy, you know, God, there was something, there was a project. The earth is supposed to be like heaven. And the only people that will colonize the earth are humans. Humans man. Alright. So he fell, became polluted. The governor left. Because the Holy Spirit can only dwell in a house that is clean. That's the reason for holiness. Alright. So the blood cleanses it so that the governor can come back. So that you can go back to your place of giving citizenship and covering the earth with the glory of God. Uh, you see, you see, in a in religion, Natasha, I'm killing devils. Sometimes you keep hearing, but how is about Baji? All right, okay, okay. So, but however, because you need to stay long. Everything that entered you as a result of the sin, which is sickness, there is a power that deals with it. And it was paid for. You are not supposed to be sick. So when the governor enters, the life of God enters. The life of God is indestructible. It's a Zoe life. And everything that is sick and dead in your body receives light. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ dwell in the inside of you. And if that spirit is in the inside of you, that spirit will give life to your mortal body. Come on, Chica. <laughs> Why will my mortal body have life so that I can continue with my assignment of colonizing the earth? Come on, am I talking here? If I'm supposed to go to heaven, then the body should stay dead or sick and die. No, but God said, no, I don't want you to die. I want you to be healed so that you will continue with the assignment. So when the spirit comes, it gives life to the mortal body. However, the idea must be pressed with money. So sin brought poverty. So not only will I heal you, I will make you wealthy. So that you can establish the covenant. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. For we know. I said, 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 for we know. Whenever a word is coming, get excited about it. No, water it, receive it. Let it have a let it have a place. Let it germinate. I said, for we know. Yes, that's how to respond when a word is coming. We know. For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, but when they Yesu Arziki. The cattle upon the thousand hill belongs to him. Shine Alang Arziki. Am I talking here? All the wealth on earth. Shine Nash, the secret riches in dark places. But because the sons are poor and he needs to pay for it, 
the penalty is for him to be poor. So for your sake, he became poor. So that you, through his poverty, somebody shout! Am I somebody shout? Am I talking here? I am saved. I am healed. I am rich. I am saved. I am healed. I am rich. Am I talking in the house of refuge? Hallelujah. Ah! It's a total package. It's one below seven die. It's a total package. Some of you are living below your inheritance. You know, I don't know. Elder Katuna, I preached this in the last spring. Below your inheritance. So if you want people to be healed, you must preach Jesus paid for the sickness. If you want people to be saved, you must preach that Jesus died so that your sins can be forgiven. And if you want people not to be poor, you must preach that Jesus became poor so that they can. The reason why the church is very poor is because the church is angry whenever they are preaching about money. Nobody will be saved if you don't preach about salvation. Nobody will be healed if you don't preach about healing. Nobody will be rich if you don't preach about Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. The reason why I quite tell you to say our church is because they fight anytime anybody in a when the church is a show, say my gun and you see. As long as you don't preach about money, nobody will be rich. Because anything that you preach, you bring the grace. If you preach about healing, you bring the grace for healing. If you preach about salvation, you bring the grace for salvation. Faith for salvation and that not of your own, given. I start preaching about salvation, faith for salvation comes to you. All right. I start preaching about healing, faith for healing comes to you. I start preaching about money. Faith for money comes to you. Come on, put your hands together. So why is the church now you see? And the reason, why is the reason? Because something is working somewhere beyond what you are seeing. The wealth of the believer is not an invention of preachers. The wealth of the believer is an integral in the autonomy, you know, you know, you know, atoning works of Jesus Christ. It's not Pastor Bias. It's not House of Refuge. No. It's an integral part. The wealth of the believer. So the major problem, and that's where it is, is how it is being preached. And you cannot, you know, you know, you know, and, and that's where, you know, you know, of course, you know. That's where the Pentecost abuse it. You know, where manipulation is being brought, where the anointing is being merchandised. But because people are ignorant and also in desperation, they want to, all right, then they now fall for it. But the wealth of a believer is an integral part of it. If I say salvation of, is free, and you don't have to do anything, you know, but believe. I have to preach about it. Same thing. I have to preach about how to be healed. And also I have to preach about how to be rich. And God has given us as kingdom citizen ways. You are not operating in the world system of wages. You're operating in the kingdom system of giving and receiving. If you as the kingdom person hate that and you allow people outside to relay you and push you out in your tithes, in your offering and your generosity, then the, 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 the sacrifice is paid but you can't benefit from it. Just like in the healing, you see when the Baptists and the missionaries come, you know, came, 
you know, of course, you know, you see, I've been, I've been, I've been around for quite a long time. I've, I've read a lot of, a lot of things. I've, I've gone, I've read a lot of doctrines different, you know, on healing. All right. Okay. The author does what the Baptist, some of them will also believe that sometimes God will give you sickness to humble you. There's a theology like that. All right. And it's not true. God cannot give you what he came to destroy. God cannot use the, ish, the things of the devil on you. God knows 1,001 ways to humble you, not using the thing of the devil. Sickness is not to humble you. Sickness is of the devil. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is of the devil. I hear what I'm talking about. All right, okay, okay, okay. And same thing when it comes to healing, you know, how you preach it matters. All right. But whenever faith comes for healing and you see your, sick, your sickness laid. All right. Now, how do you become safe? If you shall believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus. And confess with your mouth. That God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Same thing. What is good for the goose is also good for the gander. Same thing. All right. How do you receive your healing? You believe in your heart. You say it because confession brings possession. If he, if he calls you heal, you declare it. Know what you feel. When you say you are saved, do you feel it? It's not by feeling, it's by faith. It's done. If you're doubting it, look at the cross. How? It's nailed. Same thing. You might feel the pain. It's not in the feeling. It's in believing that the sickness is taken. And faith has to be acted upon. Because faith without works is dead. So if your legs is paralyzed, you stretch it. If your eyes can't see, you open. Am I talking here? If your ears can hear, you ask somebody to talk. Act. Same thing. When you believe, now in, when it comes to wealth and riches, what do you believe? You believe what he says, bring ye the tithe to the storehouse. You bring what he says, he that soweth spirit shall reap, sorry, give and it shall be given unto you. You believe what he says. When you believe, you do. And when you do, you speak with your mouth. I'm rich. I'm wealthy. The works of my hands prosper. Everything I do prosper. Money is coming to me. They're coming to me in different currency. Now, I'm not talking here. People are doing me good. I have crazy bonuses. Uncommon favor is upon my life. I speak because my speaking allow me into my possession. I walk in what I say. Come and put your hands together. I say, come and put your hands together. Ah! You cannot operate in wealth when you say that you farm out No, 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 no. You're not in our kingdom. In our kingdom, we say it before we walk into it. <laughs> Come on, am I talking in the house of refuge? Yes. Come on. In our kingdom, that's why in our kingdom, people will look at us and be confused. How can young people like these students build that? Build this. Why? The wealth of the believer is there. We have it. So we call it in and we walk in it. And when you begin to do that, you're in the same office with somebody. You can go cook about 30,000, but God knows how to stretch your own. Put favor on it. Turn your investment. Cause you to begin to walk in power. I'm not talking here. Once you believe and walk in, like a, in your place of work, you're looking different. Why? Because yes, commander one by one, but there is something on me. I'm not talking here. The price for poverty has been paid. I receive it. I walk in it. I say it. I confess it. I don't look it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Because it begins to come from everywhere. Now, however, you have to understand the reason for the wealth. You know, you, am, am I helping somebody here? I say, am I, I say, am I helping somebody here? Am I helping somebody here? Now, um, most of the time, the reason, the problem is that we preach about riches wrongly. But you must know that the price, you know, you know, for you to be rich has been paid. 
you have a right to prosperity. I say you have a right to prosperity. I say you have a right to prosperity. Listen to me, you have a right to escape poverty. Let me say it again. You have a right to, you don't have to die like your father or your grandfather. You have a right to escape poverty. Why? It's been paid. It's your own. You, you can walk in it. Through him, you have a right. From, I don't preach, you know, message for you to be happy. But you see, actually, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm trying to actually set up the theology of the house. The theology of house of refuge is that we believe that Jesus Christ died so that you can be saved, you can be healed, and you can be rich. Why? Deuteronomy 18, 18 told us. You're so, I say you're supposed to be rich. I say you're supposed to be rich. I say you're supposed to be rich. All right. Now, if you're supposed to be rich, why are you supposed to be rich? And that's what I'm going to also be able to release the mind of the devil. If God wants or have an idea to be propagated, it's not enough to have people who can say it. He has to make sure that he has people who can fuel it. So that's why you're supposed to be rich. Because the idea, everything about the gospel, you know, is about money. And, if, you know, and God said, I'm going to give you the power to get wealth so that God can trust you that when you get the money, you're going to support the work. The major problem, and you know, sometimes even in the house of God, you know, you know, you are limited, you know, because in supporting the work also is an avenue. You see how the money is being preached. There are, based on the sacrifice, there are ways in which he put in place for the flow of money into you. And the reason why money will come to you is to support the work. And as you support the work, more money comes to you. If, am I talking here? He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. All right, and you're supposed to, you know, sowing is supposed to be systemic, systemic, systemic. It's supposed to be purposeful. It's not supposed to be, uh, and then it's supposed to be cheerful. You're not supposed to be angry giving. God loves a cheerful giver. If God loves you, go to bed. <laughs> Come on. I say, let me say it again. I say, if God loves you, you know, the Bible says that men should love. The woman. What is love? Love is caring. What is caring? Caring is to think about what your wife will need next year and provide for it even before she arrives at the need. No, you're not hearing what I'm talking about. Somebody, but you see, the problem is that you don't understand when the, you know, when the Bible uses word. So when the Bible uses word love, it means that you will never lack. Because love will make you to care and in caring you will sit down look at the person even before he knows he has a need you will you will phantom the need and provide the need before he needs it is already there that's why all my needs are met so if god loves a cheerful giver how do i get the love is when i'm a giver when i'm a giver his love comes on me and i never lack because he thinks about what i will enter he opens the door he puts favor on me before i ask i is already there why? He loves me. Come on, put your hands together. But who does he love? A giver. So if the internet will stop you from giving, they are blocking you from the love of God. Come on, am I talking here? Am I talking here? Come on. So they lie to you. And they begin to say that the church is collecting your money. No. For your information, the money in House of Refuge is not the pastor's money. It's not my money. It's an institutional money given for the expansion of the work and the vision. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Well, if the pastor's moves on such a salary, I've not been on salary yet. From it. However, you have to understand that if anybody lied to you and pull you away, you know, from the sources in which you benefit from the sacrifice, then there is a problem. And that's the, the work of the devil. You see, let me tell you, if, if you were Satan, <laughs> you're not Satan, I'm dealing with some things. If you were Satan... <laughs> And you wanted to stop the gospel from spreading. 
what will you do? There are two things about the devil that the devil can never do, be able to stop. Number one, he can never stop the calling. Number two, he can never stop the anointing. Let me say it again. Because he's not the one that does the calling. And he can never stop it. The calling. If Satan wants to interfere with the preaching of the gospel, he will not interfere at the calling stage. Because the calling is outside of his jurisdiction. I am the one that chose you. The calling is done by God. He cannot stop three people again from having the anointing. It's the anointing. The anointing comes from God. All right. But if the devil is going to stop, he will going to stop in the propagation. Because the calling, he can't stop it. The anointing, he can't stop it. The propagation has to do with money. He can interfere in the propagation. He can, but at the propagation state, and make sure that those who have the mandate to preach the gospel never have the money to finance it. They have the calling, they have the anointing, but there's no money to carry it. And as long as, you know, that's why God knows that money is powerful. Because no matter how you are called, no matter how you are anointed, the propagation is vital. If there's no money, the movement, the propagation will, you know, you know, okay. So the devil will position at the propagation. And he's going to do that by spreading lies and a sen sense of uncomfortableness in the church whenever you talk about money. That's why you're seeing anger that doesn't make sense. You have to wake up and know that it's demonic. Nobody is angry about salvation. Nobody is angry about healing. Why are they angry about money? Anger that doesn't make sense. And then the people in church are very uncomfortable. Immediately you start talking about money. They become uncomfortable. They are okay when you talk about salvation. They are okay. Why are you uncomfortable when we talk about money? It's a plan of the devil. Because if you don't hear about money, you can't have faith in money. And if you don't have faith, you can't have money. If you don't hear about money in salvation, you can't have faith in salvation. If you don't hear about healing, you can't have faith in healing. I'm not talking here. And as long as the people in church are broke, the idea will be stifled. It can't go anywhere. And as long as people in church are polluted with anger against their church and they begin to hold their money, they don't tithe, then nothing is going to happen. While the idea will not move and the people will remain you know, broke. Because the, the, the penalty for your poverty has been paid. But you are not taking advantage of it. Because somebody has made you to become angry with the church, with money, and uncomfortable when they're talking about money. And so you see some churches, all your life, they will never teach the people on money, on investment, how money works, how do they bank, how do you allow it to gather. They never and as long as you don't teach the people. Now, somebody said, that, well, but you're teaching the people the worldly system. No, no. Every, finance, every success principle in the world, you know, in the world came out from the word of God. And everybody that is not a believer and you think that they are blessed, they are not blessed. None of them is blessed. They only picked up spiritual principles and used it. And anybody that picked up spiritual principle and used it, it will work because it's a key. That's why God is careful who gets the key. Because anybody that gets the key, he will unlock. So if an unbeliever gets the key of giving, he will receive. If an unbeliever gets the key of investment, he will get a return. Jesus said that you foolish. Why did you hide it? You could have even give it so that it will accrue interest. The five, what did he do to get ten? He invested. It's a principle in the word of God. So they picked the principles in the word of God. They got the key. While the sons in the house are angry, they took the principle in the word of God and bought the future. Bought friends. The guy, unjust steward, he bought, he bought comfort in the future using money. And an unbeliever, 
will take the principle, spiritual principle, and become crazily wealthy. They are not blessed. No, they just use the principle of the word of God. The only people that are blessed are people that are in the kingdom of God. No unbeliever that is blessed. Blessing is only in the kingdom. Am I talking in the house of refuge? I said, am I talking in the house of refuge? Come on, am I, am I talking in house of refuge? I said, am I talking in house of refuge? Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. And what the devil is going to do, you know, by stopping, by, by spreading lies and I said, I know about what it takes to make money. And then he's going to ensure that wrong people have the money. Who are the wrong people? People that will not finance the kingdom. Wrong people. In fact, even wrong ministries, ministries that are not actually dealing with kingdom principles, you make sure you, the devil doesn't bother. And then you now come, and then you meet confused people. How can you come to church? And then you say, and the pastor will take a bag, your bag, and then say he will pray, and then you'll see money in the bag. And you're speaking in tongues, and you're believing it. In church. And then you come, that you now put your hand in your pocket, and you see money in your pocket in church. And you are believing it. That's not the sacrifice of Jesus. That's which is and that's stupidity. High level of foolishness. That's not what I'm teaching here. And when they do that, and you say, whoa, then the next is that. So into that anointing. And then all of you, money that you have never even given to God, to his work, you will now bring it to so in the anointing because you now miracle money to show in your pocket. And up to now, nothing entered your pocket. And then we make a mess of our gospel. Meanwhile, God said, guys, simple, I died. I paid the sacrifice. Now activate the principle. Give. And it shall be given unto you. Pay your tithe. Move into generosity. When you move into generosity, my God shall supply all of your needs. You want sparingly, so sparingly. You want bountifully, so bountifully. Principles. Am I talking in house of refuge? Anybody that makes you comfortable not to give is satanic and wants to destroy you. He wants to keep you poor. Now, as I begin to, begin to close, I have... Now, listen to me. Satan's agenda is that the righteous and the biblically wise do not get into the corridors, you know, of power. And as long as you are, you are broke, you can't enter into the corridors of power. It takes money, you know, to move in political offices. Well, yes, favor is going to come on you, Yes. All right. So, but the aim of the devil. Now, give me Luke chapter 4 and verse 5 to 7. Later, I'm also going to show you that the church is not your problem. So, don't be angry with the church. In fact, it's for the interest of the church for you to be wealthy. It's not for the interest of Pastor Biasa for you to. If you are broke, don't suffer the worry. But if you are rich and you understand what I'm teaching, we will bring the gospel faster. Refuge homes will be built. Refuge education will be... Am I talking about the refuge? Hospitals will be set. Don't ever, don't ever hear anybody... The church is not against you now. Look for... No. Then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in the moment of time. And look at... Next verse. And the devils... And, and, and of his glory. And the devil said that... All this authority I will give to you and their glory. When you see the word glory there, it's actually talking about money. The weight of it. Authority talking about corridors of power. It's delivered to me and I give it to whoever I wish. 
And Jesus Christ did not counter this statement. Because he knew that he's going to pay the price for whosoever will. But the whosoever, am I talking here? Come on, put your hands together. But the devil is the God of this world. So this statement is real. So the devil, left to the devil, he will not give people that are biblically wise ability to get into the corridors of power. He, you know, if the devil is going to give money, he will not give to Christians or believers. And he's going to also waylay them, anoint other people that will make them become uncomfortable when you, they start hearing about money and they think that they are pious when they are poor. And for your information, listen to me. Satan has the power to give money, wealth. You know, I'm not talking about what, you see, I'm not talking about what, what you're seeing in Africa. This thing. No, that's not the devil. Where blood money, it's, it, it's not real, it doesn't happen. It's not, that's not how the devil gives, No. It's in Africa that you see this gory state. No, that's not how it works. Whatever the devil does that, that's not how it works. What the devil does is that he can give people that are very smart in ideas ability to have excessive wealth. However, that money can never be used to propagate the gospel. The wife of you know, McKinsey, the wife of Jess Bezos, she's a billionaire. She's one of the highest givers in charity. Go and find out the money, the causes in which she gave his money, her money to. Not one propagate the gospel. Same-sex marriage, homosexuality, abortion. He can pick smartest people in the world that don't have any inkling about God. Release money. So when, when, you're, when you're dealing with that, Satan can empower people who are smart so that they, are, they, not, so that they cannot sponsor a, they can sponsor a message that will counter the word of God. There are some people who have a lot of money. They have money to drag and make penniless a church. Let the pastor say anything against what they are sponsoring. They bring him down. There is an effort to keep money out of the hands of believers. It used to be, we know what, you know, and, 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 and sometimes some of you have signed in to become demonic agents unconsciously. And you are walking the course of the devil. Jesus said, anything you hear me teach, shout it on the rooftop. Right? Yeah. How do you shout it on the rooftop? Because Anybody that doesn't have money doesn't have a voice. And so, so we see that, you know, you know, you know, you know, when you look at the agenda that runs the world, it's not the kingdom of God agenda. Why is demonic agenda running the world? It's being financed by money. But what God told us in the, in the closet, we can shout it because we don't have money. You can say it on the roof. People whose voices are louder than yours are controlling your kids because they have bought the space into your child's brain. And you're, you're doing a bin chinini, your child's brain is taken by other people. And it's taken by them that have money. They press an idea into them. Press an idea into them. They press an idea. So you wake up, you see your daughter your daughter, Pearson, is better for her to have said the no Your daughter, your daughter, body, I mean your daughter, an idea is pressed into them. Because their brain is captured by people that have money. And the church can't even capture that space. Because what he told us in the closet, we can't shout it on the rooftop. Why? No money. The media is not in our hands. We don't have the sleekness. We don't have the combination that will attract the young people. Had your church say, Benchi, Kujerum Benchi, Beko, Anatafa Makawai. And then the mind of the children is taken by the people that control the agenda of the world. And it's only taken by money. 
and you're comfortable broke, you want to go to heaven. Some parents, they're in church, their children are in clubhouse. Parents in church, daughters sleeping outside. Parents in church, children hook up. Why? Because the spaces are taken over by the people that have money. They bombard. Almost every of the air spaces taken. Am I talking house of refuge? I said, am I talking house of refuge? The devil's agenda against the church is number one. Make the church feel guilty about making money. Number two, keep the believers away from money. As long as you're guilty about money and you're away from money, the thing that Jesus Christ told you in the secret, you can never shout it in the open. You can never. Our, meet, our children, so let's take the teenage and the, and the this, you know, we can pull in all the young people in this city into this place. If we have crazy media in this place. Let's assume when we're leaving, we left this thing. Not only here, there's screen here for them, screen here for them. We, we, we return the, 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 the media. They have, they have almost everything they, they needed. We need hundreds of millions to do that. So that immediately they come. In fact, not only is the screen like that, the screen is also Wi-Fi. It's hooked up. And, and, and media is holding their attention. All of them, they will, not, they will not want Sunday to finish. They will be dreaming for Sunday to come on Saturday. They want to run. They want to come. Because there is media. They, you know, visual is taking care of, you know, is, is arresting them. The devil is releasing a message for the generation, but the church is backward. Because the church is not media savvy. No money more for media. Can I have a gun and cameras? Pick up a camera. Camera, they have $42,000. Pick a camera. We just bought some few cameras. We even bought them used. Over a million. Million, million. Then they kill an attack of Imbeko. In fact, like a Chibashi. And at the Bianca Kadanka. At the farmer. So you have your shoes like a Daka was like a conquering Gary. When the unbelievers want to finance, that's Zuko with the Kuiz. That's a second down. They take over the place overnight. How many of you have gone to Dogire? When you call Islamic Center, the only Doga in Bongo. Have you seen it? Turn down far back, but when I now pick away, dab, pick away. Well funded. Everything of the devil is heavily funded. Church and at the farm and the bacon could have 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 why is it that when you come to church, you struggle? There's an agenda. Make sure you keep believers away from money. Make them to become uncomfortable with money. Make them to become angry when a church is becoming prosperous. And as long as that, the idea of the gospel, this one is partnership. The idea of the gospel cannot go. You are angry when a pastor prospers. I saw something that gladdened my heart yesterday. Um, no, I'm not so I don't have time. I have seven minutes. When you like a shower, Mike, when they go, Sabine could you run and say, How's not wasting? Could you souls are dying? And then there are some of you. Let me ask you a question. How many of you from January 2022 to December? You had, had spent up to 6,000. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. You have spent up to 6,000. Wave your hand. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you have paid 6,000 for this thing? So you can count. 
kaga abunde neke fadaku. From January to December 2022, how many of you have gotten 6,000? Wave your hand. Oh. So, there's a spirit that is working in this, you know, in you, and you don't even know. It's working consciously, unconsciously. Come on, put your hands together if you understand what I'm talking about. The most irresponsible, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm rounding it because on, you know, on. <laughs> if somebody wants to block the gospel from being preached, he will deny the church from having money. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you must have money. Don't be ashamed with it. Say, neighbor, you must have money. Yes. It's, it's, not, it's not unholy to have money. Money is holiness. Come on, put your hands together. It's a holy thing. If healing is not unholy, if salvation is not unholy, money cannot be unholy. If salvation sacrifice has been paid, healing sacrifice has been paid, poverty sacrifice has been paid. If God is concerned about salvation and he's concerned about healing, he's concerned about money. Come on, put your hands together. The reason, you know, if the church has no money, its message can be corrupted and there will be no way of fighting back. You can't change ideologies without money. Can you imagine we have crazy money? You know, our television stations are on. When I, when I hit it, and then I can do podcasts. My, my, my good studio, good studio, my sad, my kill. When the studio, some of these are picture. You, you can't enter into. You know, and you see the reason for the money. One of my son was watch. He saw my. Uh, you know, initially we had. You know, not this camera. These cameras with good lighting, it can go. The other cameras that we were using. You know, I said that well, great message, but the quality. Again, we have people who under, you know, got expensive equipment, but they've not studied it, you know. Then he now said, okay, I'm, I'm sending you two million. Get a camera that is 4K compliant. You know, the reason for the money for the world is that he wants to give it to you so that when he asks for it, you will give it. Few, few weeks ago, I'm sure if you've seen, apart from network prob pro pro you know, problem, if you see our, our live stream, the quality has changed, right? You've seen it? The camera. All right. This is not even the camera that we bought that he gave us, that, you know, because, you know, you know, but because we had already bought two cameras, great sacrifice, you know, before he, you know, he made that. They, they have just not come. You know, so, so it is expected that you are here when you look, because it's your kingdom, you see a demand, you're supposed to say that, I'm supposed to handle this. How much is it? 10 million. I'm paying it. That's why he gave you the money. So that you can establish covenant, establish the relationship you have with him, and also take an agenda in the kingdom of God and push it. Not for the money to come, and then you now hold. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're supposed to be rich. Every kingdom citizen must be aware that Christianity is coming into the, you know, is your ability to come into the kingdom. And when you come into the kingdom, it's not about your personal life or your personal prosperity. So when he's given the money, it's for the purpose of the kingdom. All right. Now, the challenge is that I know because we met you, you know, you're surviving, trying to survive. But the church is not actually the one that made you poor. So, if people are lying to you that they want to call, let me ask, most of you, you came to church poor. In fact, the church made you better. Come on, put your hands together. The, we, we met you. We, 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 when, when we met you, we met you poor. And now somebody has put a seed in you. Ah, they're trying to take my money. No, when we met you, you were broke. We met you poor. Without the church, you have managed to be poor all by yourself. It's the church that has moved you. When the ch you, know, you, know, you have to know that the church is not the one who made you poor. We found you poor. You have managed to be poor all by yourself. You know, you know, you know, and, and, you know, some of you, when I look at where I met you and where you are, I can put my hand and tap and 
said, I have done a good job because I picked you in a place. Now look at where you are. There's a movement. How many of you, there's a change in your life? The way you think, the way you invest, the way you move, the way you, and God has put his favor on you. There's a shift. So the church, the church is not your enemy. And don't allow anybody to lie to you to fight the church. And then refuse to release and resources for the church. Most of you came broke. In fact, one of the reasons you came is because you're poor. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> this is what Paul said. Say, Paul, Paul said that you know your calling. Not most of you are rich. Broke. But then when the word of God begins to come on you, it begins to shift you. All right? You know, and you were poor not because you made it. Most people are poor through different factors. A lot of factors. When you pick Africa, crazy factors, you know, you know, culture, history, geography. Some of you are poor because of a lack of education. Poor. Some of us are poor because of a rape of resources. The white came, snatched, made us make sure we are ignorant, took our resources. Have you been to Joss? One time before my elder brother, the Yashi guy, I can go there. One time, Muka she go only get rid daji. Muka she get chicken daji Joss. Balaka ganiya hanya ba. You go and see golf, Ramuka, and then even the engine and also abandon. Resources that are pulling out to Britain. Iron ore, kuza. And then they drained everything and then they left the villages impoverished and broke. And they can't source anything because everything in the ground was taken. All. They abandoned the machines, rusted. Houses rusted. Resources, rape of resources. Colonialism. There's something that does to your psyche when you're colonized. It shifts you and makes you inferior. That's why up to now we want the validation of the, of the white. Until you are emancipation from slave, in the mental slavery, you come you know, to, to hell with Britain. Some of the poverty of the north, you know, of the Africans, as a result of the white, they made mental slavery. And up to now we are just so stupid and couldn't think, can't think. Poverty. So it's not the church that made, it's not the church. You have transgenerational poverty. Your great grandfather is poor. Your father, grandfather is poor. Your father is poor. Okay, they care. Babanka be gampa ni makaranta, but they care. Can I talk a farmer? So you're just like that. Now, can I some katashi? Every weight a kanka. Baraka ya flying ba. Komi anata denaka. Gawa nanga damwa. Kana so katashi. Poverty everywhere. Transgenerational. Poverty is not an accident of life. But Jesus Christ paid the price. Can you take the price? You have to be, come on, put your hands together. Time now. Poverty can be historical based on injustice. If I take your land, Mugabe, why, the reason why he fought, then they're called Rhodesia. Why? The whites came, took all the lands. Black people, Garisu, bust the land. The lands are in the white, hands of the whites. So how do you want them to be rich? That's why poverty had in Zimbabwe. Because now even the Kwacho one thing are making us a subservient. Now the Baturin Sun Tefi, they can't even walk. Transgenerational poverty. That's why let me tell you, anybody in back of the Yesu, Kalalache. The only hope is the church. So don't fight the church. Come and put your hands together if you understand. And some of you, then the Pentecostal came and, and lied to you. Every witch that you see your life fall and die. Your poverty is not a witch problem. There is no witch in your village that is after you. There is no anything. It's a lie. My star. Say ten times. Which star? If the witch are after your wealth, why are the witch not rich? Come on, put your hands together if you understand. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. All your village witches are poor. So you know that it's not about witches. 
The factors of your poverty are not spiritual in nature. Sometimes we blame try, we blame. No, it's not. They are part, you know, of the game. But, you know, not, you know, for you not to understand the factors that made you poor. So, and I'm back on the spiritual, when I'm back on the spiritual, can they fall and die, fall and die? No. And take back so that you back at the mind can concentrate on real problem. And it's the aim of the devil. Because as long as you don't see the real problem and the answer, you can't, all right. So, we, you know, there is history. Your grandfather was poor. Father was poor. No good education. You know, I'm just wondering, my even nanny, some of us, that, but, but the little education. <laughs> you know. So look at me. I'm not the cause of your poverty. I'm actually the solution to your dilemma. So don't allow anybody to, to cheat you out of not being partner and support because it is in your tithe, in your offering, and your generosity that you take advantage of the sacrifice that was paid for your money. Nobody wants to take money away from you. God wants to give money to you. In fact, for your information, he even became poor so that you will become rich. Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put your hands together. My time is up. How many of you, how many of you are blessed? Let me tell you, it is in my interest that you become rich. Because if you if you're wealthy, then it means you're going to sponsor the work. It's not in the interest of the church for you to be broke. So anybody that begins to align you into the thing, you know, no, no. It's not in the interest of the church of God for his, his people to be broke. It's in the interest of the church for you to be wealthy. So you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth you power to create wealth so that you will establish his covenant that he has sworn to your fathers up until this day. There's a reason for the wealth. You are created for greatness. You are supposed to be wealthy. Am I talking here? But you see, you are in this kingdom. It's not personal prosperity. The reason for the wealth is for the kingdom advancement. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the ethnos. Then the end shall come. The end is the end of the age. There's going to be a new heaven and then a new earth. All right. Okay. Okay. I want to encourage you, whether you're a student, whether you, you know, you know, and you have not, it's, it's not, you know, get a partnership. Enter into... On Sunday, I would, I would deal with, um, with tithe. You know, take advantage of the sacrifice. Just as you took advantage of the blood and you are saved, and you took advantage of the stripes and you are healed, take advantage of his poverty so that you can become rich. All of you, if you are not a tither, repent and start tithing. Mark... Make, make your money as it comes weekly. When money enters into your hand, don't. The first thing that you should think on is His kingdom. Remove the tithe and see how. Listen to me. God loves people that give. And at every week, you set aside what comes in. Set your tithe. You know, if you want to gather it to the end of the month, until the make sure no. Enter into covenant with him with your resources. We're breaking the back of poverty. I said we're breaking the back of poverty. And you're securing the future of your generation yet unborn from you. Wealth and riches are actually inheritance given by fathers or parents. But a good wife, the Bible said, that comes from the Lord. What that means is that you have a responsibility to set up durable riches for anything that is coming after you. Hallelujah. Come on, are you, are you happy? Come on, put your hands together. I said, come on, put those hands together. You're created for wealth. I said, you're created for wealth. I said, you're created for wealth. You're created for wealth. Thank you, Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. I break every cycle of poverty. Everything that is contrary to the will of God concerning your money, your resources, and your wealth.